Hello, welcome to this Technogram's tutorial on Adobe Animate. This is part two of our road safety animation tutorial. In part one, we created the first scene of our animation and it was the title scene to introduce the animation. Now for part two of this tutorial, we will be creating a traffic lights animation where we'll create a car approaching a set of traffic lights. The car will come to a stop and then when the traffic lights turn back to green, the car will pull off and move away from the traffic lights. So here is an example. Here we've got an example of the storyboard that you could create for this animation, showing the steps that we want to create. So we've got the car starting on the left, the car is made of a uh, the car is a symbol made of three other symbols, the body and a wheel, which is used twice. So the car approaches the traffic lights, starting off green. As the car approaches, the traffic lights turn to amber and then red, at which point the car is going to come towards the traffic lights, come to a stop and screech forward. The car will wait for the lights to turn back to amber and then red sorry and then green and then when the lights turn back to green the car will pull off move forwards and eventually move off the right side of the screen okay so this um, storyboard shows some information about the animation we want to create including some of the ease effects and some of the symbols we, that we want to be using so this animation for part two is going to be more complicated than part one because we've got a number of different objects that we're animating in different ways. So the traffic light will be a simple shape. We will need to create, turn it into a symbol and we'll animate the traffic lights using frame by frame animation. Okay, so there won't be any moving parts or anything changing positions. Then for the car, the car, as we said, will be made up of a number of different parts and they'll need to be animated together but they'll also contain small animations within different parts of the car. So for example, the car itself will be bobbing up and down. The wheels will be turning and stopping. The exhaust will be uh, showing the fumes coming out. And the car all together then will be moving forwards, stopping and moving forwards. Okay, so a number of moving parts within the one object. So that makes it a little bit more complicated to animate. Now, if you've already followed our tutorial on animating with Nessus symbols, that should give you a better understanding of how we're going to create the animation of the car with multiple animated parts within one object. Now, let's get animating. So we're not going to create a new file unless you want to make a new file. But for this tutorial example, we're going to be continuing on the road safety animation that we created in part one. So I'm going to open that up. So use my road safety animation. Okay, so we had the title scrolling up the screen. So we're going to be continuing from this point. So the way we're going to create the next part of the animation is adding a new scene. So if you haven't got the scene window open, go to window, scene, and we're going to click this little plus in the bottom left to add a new scene. Now, by adding a new scene, as you can see, it gives me a brand new timeline within my animation. And you can think of new scenes as uh, new scenes in a show on telly, like a film or a television show, or you can think of them as new chapters in a book. It's any time you want to start a different animation within your project. Now, scenes play in order, and it, that's the order they're listed in the scene library. So, for example, when I play this animation, the title will play first, and then when the title ends, scene two will start. And each scene lasts for however long the timeline of that scene lasts. So scene one here, the title will last for 10 seconds. And then after the 10 seconds is done, uh, the animation will transition to scene two automatically. Okay, so you don't need to worry about tell and animate uh, to switch scenes. You just need to put your scenes in the right order and then animate will run through them for you. Let's give scene two a name. 
and this is going to be our traffic lights scene. I'll click enter on the keyboard to um, confirm it. Okay, so let's start off creating the car. So I'm going to rename the layer car. And my first part of the car I'm going to create is the body. So car body. Now, I want to make sure I, I'm zoomed in to fit the window so I can see the full stage. Now, to create the car, we're going to use the drawing tools. Now, if you prefer and you've got a an asset or an image already existing that you want to bring in, you can file import to the library that image if you've got one. But because we're going to have different moving parts in our car and because I want to create an object of our own, we're going to create it within Animate. So you can use any of the drawing tools, for example, the brush tools, you could paint the car. We can use the shape drawing tools like the rectangle and the oval to draw the shapes and then manipulate them. You could use the pen tool to draw the car and then again manipulate it using the, using the selection tool. But for this example, we're going to use the rectangle tool. So we're going to draw a rectangle and then manipulate it to create a car shape. So I want my car to be red and I want it to have a black outline. Um, let's see the stroke. Let's, let's make it one and see how it looks. Okay, I want it a bit thicker than that, so I'm going to undo. Let's try two. Okay, yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, so I got my... I've selected my rectangle tool and in the tool properties window under color and style, I've selected red fill, black stroke and stroke size of two. So I'm going to draw my rectangle there. Not taking up loads of the stage, it's not even a quarter of the size, okay? Because we're going to have the car around this area moving across the, st the, st the stage, sorry. Okay, so now I use the selection tool and this is a way we can manipulate shapes uh, to create what we want. So I'm going to try to turn this rectangle now into a kind of trapezium shape. So drag the corners in and then manipulate the sides to create curves. So I'm going top left first. I'm going to drag it into there. Top right and drag it to there. So I've got my kind of trapezium shape. Then I'm going to hover over the edge, so the left edge, and I got a little curve on the mouse pointer. And I'm going to turn it into a curve of the car. So that's the back end of the car. And I'm going to do the front here. And then for the middle, for the body, I'm going to raise it up. And then just move it around, just play with it to try to create my car shape that I'm happy with. Okay, so have a play with your um, shape you've created. Manipulate those points to try to create something that you are happy with that looks like a car. And it doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. Maybe the front is a bit longer than the back. It's up to you. Okay, there's my car body shape. I'm happy with that. Now let's cut out some holes for the wheels. To do this, I'll use the oval tool. Okay, so I'm going to draw the oval, but I don't want to draw it overlapping the car just yet, because remember, if I do that and then move it, it's going to take away a chunk of the car. So I'm going to think about it first. So when I draw my wheel, I'm going to hold down shift to create a perfect circle. And I don't want my wheels massive. I need them in a good proportion with the car. So let's have a look how that looks. Yeah, that looks okay. I'm happy with that. So I'm not going to overlap it yet. What I'm going to do is select all of that wheel. So double click the center or highlight it with the selection tool. And then I'm going to copy it. So you could control and C and then control and V and copy and paste. But on my keyboard, I'm going to hold down the alt button and the shift button at the same time and drag it. And holding, on, holding down alt copies the um, object, the shape, and holding down shift keeps it in the same alignment. Okay, so there's my two wheels, the same size and in line. I'm going to select them both 
and then move them up. Oh, I deselected and I made a mistake, so I'm going to undo. So reselect, and I forgot the circle, that's okay. So reselect again. Okay, now we go in. So I'm overlapping. Now I don't want it too high up because otherwise it's going to cut out a chunk of the car and the curve of the wheel is going to come down too low so it'll be hard for me to slot the wheel back in later on. So I want the wheels down at most halfway or even a little bit lower if you prefer. I'm moving them forwards. Okay, so I'm happy with that position. I'm going to deselect them so that they merge with the car body shape. Now I'm not going to leave them like that, but I do want to leave this black curve at the top of the wheels there so that it leaves a gap for the wheels to go into because these are not going to be my wheels just yet. So I'm going to click that circle and hold down shift to select the bottom part of the outline and then hold down shift again to select the other circle and keep shift down and hold the bottom part of the other outline and then if I detach these not only does it give me a gap for my wheels to slot into but it leaves me that black outline on the inside uh, edge of the gap for the wheels so that's looking good there's my car body with my wheel gap now I'm only going to need one of these wheels, so I'm going to delete this one and the outline and I'm going to delete the outline from this wheel. So I'm just going to be left with the one wheel. And I'm going to select the car body and bring it over to the left. Okay, so now we are going to create a wheel. And so not just a circle. So I'm going to do this on a new layer, just so I'm not interfering with the car body. So I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to call it car wheel and I'm going to make it the left wheel first, car wheel L. Now the reason I'm I'm going to eventually have two different layers for my two wheels because I'm going to need to be animating them both in the same way but it's difficult to animate more than one symbol on the same layer. Okay, so animate will want you to use two different layers sorry, a different layer for each of the symbols you're animating. So I'm just preempting that now and creating one layer for the left wheel first. Okay, I'm going to go to the car body layer. I'm going to select that wheel. I'm going to cut it, edit cut. And I'm going to lock the car body layer and go to my car wheel L layer and we're going to paste it. So here's the wheel and I'm just going to zoom in. Okay, so I'm going to copy this wheel by using Alt again and dragging it across. Now I'm going to make it a bit smaller, so using the free transform tool. And hold down Shift again to keep that proportion. Okay, so I'm intending now for this. This is going to be used to cut out the centre part of the wheel. So the outside edge is going to be here, and then we're going to cut out the centre part. So I'm going to make this wheel black. So I'm going to select it with the selection tool. Go to the fill color in the object properties window and I'm going to choose black for a black wheel. Now this cutout, I'm selecting and I'm going to turn white. Okay, so you can't see it, but it is there. And now I'm going to overlap the cutout on top of the wheel so that it cuts out that center. But first, I'm going to make sure that I'm, actually I'm going to make that grey for now so I can see it properly when I deselect it. Okay, so I know I've got these two circles ready, so I'm going to select the black circle and I'm going to centralise it to the screen, to the stage. So we can either click here on a line on the right side of the screen and align to a horizontal centre and vertical centre, but you're going to need to make sure you got this ticked, align to stage because we don't want to align objects together, we want to align it to the stage. Okay, so you can click horizontal center and vertical center, or you can select the shape and go to modify, align, and choose them there. Or you can use some keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to hold down um, Control, Alt, and 2, and then Control, Alt, and 5. 
and that aligns it completely in the center of the stage, as you can see. And now I'm going to do the same with my uh, smaller circle. So control alt 2, control alt 5, and there we go, it's perfectly in line with the center of that first circle. Okay, so there's no guessing work for me now. I can align things perfectly centralized to each other by doing something like that. And the reason I didn't centralize, uh, center align them together by selecting them both was just because I didn't want to risk the chance of um, merging the shapes and cutting bits off before I was ready. So now that I am ready, I can deselect. And if I move this gray circle, as you can see, it's cut out that middle part. But I'm going to keep it there and I'm going to turn it back to white. Okay, so there's my wheel. Now let's create some spokes. So I'm going to use the line tool. Yeah, that looks okay. So I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to, again, I'm not going to draw it on the wheel just yet. I'm going to prepare it first and then align them together. So I'm going to make sure it's long enough to cover all of the white. Okay, so there's one. I'm going to copy that. So I'm going to hold down Alt and drag. And now I'm going to take this one I've just copied and I'm going to modify, transform and rotate. Okay, so I got my two lines, my uh, vertical and horizontal lines. And now I also want some diagonal lines. So I'm going to copy one of these again. So again, either control C and V or hold on Alt and drag. I'm going to use the free transform tool and I'm going to hover over this line until I get that uh, little rotation tool appearing. It can be tricky to find with lines. But now I'm guessing as to the angle. So rather than guessing, I'm going to undo that. And again, I'm going to use shift. I'm going to hold down shift and rotate. So I hold down shift and rotate. Again, I'm finding it tricky to get it. There we go. I got that rotation tool. And as you can see, I can rotate it into perfectly 45 degree diagonal lines or perfectly vertical and horizontal lines. So I'm going to go to perfectly diagonal. So again, no guesswork. And then I'm going to take this line, copy it and modify, transform, rotate. Okay, so there's my four spokes that are going to combine together to create eight spokes. I'm just going to move them away from the center because I'm going to use the central alignment to get them all together. So I'll take this first one. Again, I'm going to go center align, horizontal and vertical. So you can use the align tool or I'm going to use the keyboard shortcuts, control alt two and five. Then I'm going to do this one next. Control Alt 2 and 5. And then the same with these two. Control Alt 2 and 5. And the last one, Control Alt 2 and 5. And there we've created from one line that we drew, we've copied it and adjusted it and then overlaid them on top of each other to create our eight spokes for the wheel. Okay, so they're looking good. And I'm just going to remove them from the center. So I'm going to center align the wheel now, so the circles, control R2 and 5. And then I'm going to align this on top. So the reason I did the wheels first is because what I, the um, order that animate, um, animate places them on top of each other is the order in which I move them. Okay, so I've done the wheel first. Now I'll select all of the spokes, control R2 and 5. And there we've created our perfectly symmetrical wheel. Uh, it looks a bit like a ship's steering wheel at the moment. So let's just adjust it. And this is nice and simple for us to do because of the overlapping feature in Animate. So I'll click that spoke that's sticking over the edge and just press delete on the keyboard and it removes it. Now, as you can see, if I uh, look closely here, we've got a little bit of the spoke sticking over the edge still. So if I just select that, you can see that it's selected that section of the spoke that overlaps the black section of our wheel. So I'm just going to delete that again as well, sorry. There we go, and it's gone. So I'm going to delete those two parts for each spoke. 
So I'm selecting and then pressing delete on the keyboard. Oh, I did that wrong, so control Z undo. And there we've got a perfect wheel. Looking good. Now on the main timeline, this wheel is going to be animated to start off rotating and then stop when the car comes to the traffic lights and then rotate again when it moves away from the traffic lights. So this is a shape and I could animate it with a shape tween but I find shape tweens with rotations don't always work well because they tend to try and morph the shape. So I'm going to convert it into a symbol. Okay, so we're going to make a symbol of a wheel which we will reuse twice so we've got then the right down the left wheel created from two instances of the same symbol in the library but before I convert it I'm just going to resize it so that when I bring my second wheel in it's going to have the ex exact same size as my first wheel and I won't have to resize it after I've created the symbol so I'm just going to zoom out a bit I'm going to take this over to my car. Now it doesn't matter if I overlap the car because remember they are on different layers so they're not going to merge with each other. So I remember now this wheel we took out of the car merger so it fits perfectly but I want it to be slightly smaller than the gap. So I'll select the whole wheel and now because we got our car body layer locked I'm not having problems selecting the car free transform tool and I'm going to hold down shift and make it slightly smaller. The other option is you could select the object and then in the, object pro in the objects properties window you can go to size, sorry position and size and you can drag the width and the height to resize. You can also do the same with the position. Drag it there. Okay, so you can adjust size and positions there also. I'm going to undo those two actions. Okay, how does that look? Yeah, I'm happy with the wheel like that. So it's done, the wheel's complete. I'm going to convert it to a symbol now, so it's ready to reuse it later on. So select it all, F8 to convert to symbol, or right click and convert to symbol, or modify convert to symbol. We're going to go for graphic, because it's not going to contain its own animation. The animation is going to be on the main timeline. And the reason for this is because we want the animation of the wheel to match up with the animation of the traffic lights and it's just easier to match it up on the same timeline than within one object, within one symbol and then matching up with a timeline elsewhere. So it's just going to be easier. And we're going to call it wheel. We're going to use the same symbol for the right and left so I don't need to define whether it's right or left. Okay. Okay, so there's my wheel and I'm going to add a new layer now. And this is going to be car wheel right. I'm going to lock the left um, wheel. Go to library. There's my wheel. So I'm going to drag it in. And I'm going to make sure it aligns perfectly with the left wheel. So just looking at the line at the top there. Can you see it comes in as I hover past the alignment? Okay, so it's aligned. Now I'm going to hold down shift and drag right. I lost my alignment there. Shift is finding something else to align it to. Okay, so I'm going to use my arrows. And there we go. So we got the two wheels created on two different layers because we're going to be animating them both in the same way. But because they're two separate instances of a, of a symbol, so they essentially on the stage they're two different symbols, we can't animate the two different symbols on the same layer, as we've said. So we need them on different layers. But we've lined them up in the right place, so we're happy and we can lock that layer. So let's go back and work on the car body. Unlock the car body. And let's add a bit more detail. So let's add in some windows, and then a headlight, and then the exhaust. Now to do this, I'm going to use the pen tool. And we're going to draw a triangle of the window and then manipulate the triangle so it fits in with the edges of the car better. And I have 
clicked on the wrong layer. There you go, you can see. I'm trying to work on the car wheel right layer. Um, so I clicked in the wrong place, so click no. So I need to select the car body frame one. And now I can use my pen tool to draw my window. So I'm going to do the triangle here. So click, click, click. And then I want to match it up with the first click. So I'm going to return my mouse to the first click and double click to end my shape. Now use my selection tool. I'm going to select the gap inside that shape, which is red, and go to the properties object window and change it to fill uh, a blue colour to represent the window. You haven't got to be blue, you can choose a different colour. But I think I'm going to go with the blue. Okay, now use the selection tool and we're going to manipulate this shape so it looks a bit more curved like a window. So first I'm going to extend it up and then I'm going to hover over the edge and curve it so it lines up better with the edge. Okay, so there's my back window. Now I'm not going to draw my front window. I'm going to double click this window, the blue shape. And then I'm going to hold down Alt and drag it over here. So I'm not going to drag it on top of the car because I don't want it cutting out and merging with the car. So over here I'm going to modify, transform, and I'm going to flip horizontal. Now I'm going to select it and move it back. And just move it into a position that I like. And I think I'll make this front window a little bit bigger than the back. So I'll move it closer to the back window than the front edge. And then manipulate the sides a bit. And give it a curve. And there we've got our two windows created. Looking nice. Okay, now the front headlight. So again, use the pen tool. And I'm just going to, again, draw a triangle and then manipulate the triangle. And then double click at the beginning. Okay, use the selection tool, select the red area inside and we'll make it yellow. Okay, now use the selection tool and change the position, sorry, change the size of the shape, the makeup of the shape. And you can adjust it as you want, make it match the edges, make it line up nicely or make it completely different. Okay, there's my headlight. I'm happy with that, looking good. And now we're going to create the exhaust. So I'm going to zoom in a bit for the exhaust. And I'm going to unlock all my layers and select the three layers. So select the first um, frame one on car wheel right. Hold down shift and select car wheel left. And hold down shift and select body. Just because I want to move all of these parts on different layers together. So I've got a bit of space at the back to draw my exhaust. Okay, so I'm just going to move them over to the right. So I've selected them all to move them together. And then I'm going to lock my car wheel layers again. Okay, I just did that to have some more space for my exhaust drawing. Okay, so the exhaust. We'll use the rectangle tool. And we'll keep it fairly thin. Okay, so we use the selection tool, select the yellow colour and fill it red to match the car, or choose a different colour if you want. And then with the selection tool, we're going to curve that back part. Okay, there we go. Now to create uh, an oval shape to go here, I'm going to click on that left edge, which I've just curved. I'm going to hold down Alt and drag it down to copy and move it from the exhaust and then I'm going to modify transform and flip horizontal so I'm creating a the right side of that oval taking it from the left side of the oval so it matches up perfectly and then I'm going to take this shape this uh, line and drag it back up and try to align it with my arrow keys to make a, an oval for my exhaust 
Okay, that's looking good. Oh, I just moved that and it hasn't taken everything. So I'll select it all together and move it. Now I think inside my exhaust here, I'll go a little bit darker. So a bit of a darker red. Okay, because it's inside the exhaust. So I'm happy with that. Now, if I select all of this and move it onto the car, uh, you can see the right side of the exhaust is overlapping the car. Now, I don't want that to happen, so I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to select the car and the wheels again and move them onto the exhaust. So I'm going to unlock the wheel layers and select using shift all of those parts. Or if I wanted to, I could use my selection tool and draw a box around everything. So I select them all together. Now I'm going to move them using my arrow keys so that the car overlaps the exhaust. There we go, looking good. Okay, so we'll lock the wheels. So our car's coming on nicely. Uh, we've got the body, the wheels, and the exhaust. So now let's draw some fumes uh, to be coming out of the exhaust. And again, we're going to select all of the objects. So I've just unlocked those wheels and I'm going to move it to the right so I've got space to draw my um, fumes. And then relock the wheels layers. Okay, so we're going to draw three lines um, in kind of a fumes or a smoke or a wind kind of shape. And then we'll use those to create our animation of the films. Now we'll do this by drawing a line. So line tool, and we'll draw a line. Doesn't matter how big it is because we can change the size later on. So I'm just moving it with the selection tool. Okay, now to create our smoke shape, I'm gonna click on this tool here, just underneath the pen tool, and it's called add anchor point tool. And we're going to add an anchor point into the center of our line. And now by adding an anchor point, it's like adding another corner to the line. And I know the line haven't got corners, but imagine it was shape and it's got corners you can manipulate. So that means I can use the selection tool to manipulate that point like a corner. Okay, as opposed to like an edge. And I'm going to manipulate the two edges either side of the anchor point uh, to create uh, that wave, that curve effect. So selection tool, and we're just going to drag that up there and then my anchor points in the middle and then drag the bottom part to create kind of a backwards three. And that's our first puff of smoke. Now we've created that, we don't actually need to draw another one. We're just going to copy that um, to keep our shape looking nice and symmetrical. So I'm going to select the whole shape by double clicking it. Hold down Alt on my keyboard or I could copy and paste, edit, copy and edit, paste. And drag it over here. Now this puff is going to be slightly bigger so you have the free transform tool. I'm going to hold down Shift and make it slightly bigger. And then do the same again. So select the larger one double click it, hold down Alt and drag, and then hold down Shift and resize to make it bigger. Okay, so there's my three puffs of smoke, my three films. I'm gonna select them all, use the free transform tool to make them a bit smaller so they match up better with the car, so they're not too big on the stage. And line them up. Now, how does that look if we zoom out? Yeah, that's looking good. So I'm going to zoom back in. Now, these three uh, puffs of films, uh, we're going to change the color. So I'm going to select them all. Now, be careful here because we're on the same layer as the car body. If I draw a box around them, I'm going to select the edge of the exhaust as well. So just be careful. I'm going to double click each line and then hold down shift to do the next line and the next. Then I can select them all together. And we're going to go to Object Properties window 
and we'll change the stroke color to a gray. Now, these films are going to be animated to look like the uh, smoke or films are coming from the car. So we're going to need to convert them into a symbol. So this symbol is going to contain animation. Therefore, we're going to create a movie clip symbol. Now, this symbol is not going to contain any movement. These shapes are not going to move. They're just going to change color. So we don't need to include any tweens as we'll be animating these using frame by frame animation. So because of this, we do not need to include the step of converting these to a graphic symbol and then to a movie symbol. We can just create these, sorry, convert these into a movie cl clip symbol. So the movie clip will contain shapes that are animated with frame by frame. Okay, so we're leaving out that step of converting to a graphic first. So we'll use the selection tool and select all three. So double click the first, hold down shift, double click the second, hold down shift, double click the third. So there's my three shapes selected. I'm going to go F8 to convert to symbol. So these are films and it's going to be a symbol containing animation. So it's underscore Ani or underscore MC if you prefer. And we're making sure there is a movie clip. Okay, so as you said, we're missing out that step. We don't need to convert it to a graphic first. Click OK. Now, here is my symbol. So let's double click to enter the container. And let's rename the layer. Films. Animation. Okay, so the way it's going to work is frame one, they're going to be all grey. Next, the smallest one will turn black then the, small, the middle one will turn black, and then the bigger one will turn black. And each time one of these uh, film sim shapes turns black, the previous one will turn back to grey. Now we don't need to turn it black back to grey, because we'll just add keyframes with them already grey, and then just convert the ones to black, sorry, change the ones to black that we need to change to black. So let's try inserting our keyframes. So we've got our first keyframe, so that's all grey. Now our second one is going to be smallest is black, then we need a third for the middle black, then a fourth for the biggest black, and then a fifth for black back to grey. So we need to insert four more keyframes. So I'll go every 10. F6 on 20, F6 on 30, F6 on 40, F6. One, two, three, four, five keyframes. Okay, so as I said, we're including no tween. We're just going to click onto the keyframe and change the color of the films. So that frame one staying as it is, frame 10. I'm selecting the first film, object properties window, and we'll turn it to black. Frame 20, select the second film, object properties window, and change to black. And then the same on frame 30 for the largest one, object properties window, change to black. And then on frame 40, we'll leave grey. Okay, so let's play. So as you can see, we do not need to create movement because these are not moving. The animation is with the colour changing. Now I'm finding that a little bit slow when I'm watching it. So I'm wondering if we should speed it up. So let's have a look. Now it's difficult for me to view this animation anywhere other than within the film's Ani symbol. Because if we look at look in our scenes, we've got the title playing first and then the traffic lights. And remember, the title is going to take uh, a bit of time. And also within the traffic lights, we've only got a timeline of one frame long, so it's not going to be quick enough. Okay, so I'm going to have to test it within the symbol. And I'm going to have to come back to it later on then and view it in the uh, main animation on test movie to see how it looks. Okay, so we'll have to keep that in mind for later on. Right, so I need to return back into this um, symbol, I'll zoom in. Okay, so as you said, this is a little bit slow, so let's drag these frames to the left to reduce the space between each keyframe. So let's bring 10 to 5, 20 to 10, 30 to 15, 40 to 20, and then we've got this excess frames left, 
So we're going to highlight them from 21 up to 40. So I clicked on 21 and dragged across. And then I'm going to right click and remove frames. And let's play it and watch it. Okay, so that's a bit quicker. I'm happy with that. That's improved it. That's done. So now let's return to the traffic lights layer. And our films are done. So let's just zoom out and take a look at the car. Okay, and we're ready for the next step. Next steps. Our films are working. And now our films need to work with our car to bob. So we need to move them up and down together. So as you can see now, we've got a, an animation of the films, which is going to sit within an animation of the car moving as well. And they're going to move with the car body. So we're going to select the entire car body, including the exhaust pipe, and the films together. So to do that, I can either click in the blank space and control an A, or I could just click frame one on the car body layer. Okay, so select all of those parts, the full car body and the films, and we're going to convert these into a symbol. Now, we've got two uh, objects here, a, a shape and a symbol. And if we try to animate these together, then uh, animate will try to get us to convert them into a symbol. So to avoid that, we're just going to convert it into a symbol first, and then convert it into another symbol. So the first symbol we're going to convert them to is a graphic, because that's not going to hold an animation. And then we're going to convert that graphic into a movie clip, which is going to hold the animation of the bobbin. Okay, so just once again, I'm going to select them all. I'm going to press F8, and we're going to make the graphic of the car. And as you can see, we got one blue container. So I'm going to convert this now, F8 again, into the movie clip of the car. Now we could animate them separately just inside the movie clip without doing the graphic um, step, the graphic uh, symbol step, by uh, putting the symbol and the car body on separate layers and just moving them together. But just to make it easier, animating them together, we'll put them into a graphic and then into a movie clip. Okay, so, okay. Right, so here's my car body connected to the exhaust films. I'm going to double click to enter the movie clip symbol. And this is going to be my car animation layer. And this is going to be very simple. It's just going to bob. So move up and down. So to do this, I've got my first keyframe, the original position. I'm going to add on two more keyframes. One for the uh, highest position and then one for the return to the original position. So I'm going to go to, I will do it for one second and see how it looks. So add the keyframe on one second, F6, and on two seconds, F6. I'm going to leave frame one as it is. I'm going to leave frame 48 as it is, and on frame 24, I'm going to use my arrow keys to just move the car with the exhaust films, remember, because they're now a symbol, up together. Now if you play it, as you can see, the car just uh, is low and then high, so it just goes up and down without actually moving. So let's apply a tween in between. And I'm going to go just with a simple point to point. I'm just going to go with a, a classic tween. OK, and then play it again to see. Now, as you can see, that's a very slow movement, OK, too slow. So one, se one second up, one second down wasn't good enough. So let's take it down to 10 frames. So, I'm going to move this to frame 20 and then get rid of the uh, leftover frames. Okay, it's quicker but again too slow, so let's try it 5. And we'll get rid of those frames. Right, 
right that's better uh, but just to make it completely equal so in between keyframes one and two we've got one two three blank frames not blank frames sorry they're holding the content from frame one so I'm going to do the same here one two three so I'm going to drag frame 10 keyframe on keyframe 10 back one just so that the uh, time between each keyframe is equal our car body animation is working now so we got the car and the films bobbing together let's return to the main timeline on the traffic lights and we'll zoom out so we can see what we've got okay so the car there is ready uh, we haven't animated the wheels to rotate yet because we need to match those up with the traffic lights and the movement of the car so we're not going to do that just yet and we're also as we said not going to combine all these together to make a different symbol of the car and the wheels because we're going to keep the wheels on their own layer because they're going to have their own animation which is needs to be separate to the car and we'll just move them together okay so let's next create the create a background for the road for the car to be moving on so we'll add a new layer and this is the background layer and because of the background we'll bring it to the bottom border and we're going to do something very simple we'll draw a road and we'll uh, create the sky as well so we'll draw a rectangle uh, we'll go for a blue with no stroke color and I'm going to zoom out slightly So the rectangle is slightly bigger than the stage, so just slightly outside the edge. And we'll draw it down to about there. And then we'll change, choose a different fill colour, choose a grey for the road, and draw a road down the bottom part of the stage. It doesn't matter if it overlaps the sky and takes up that space, that's fine. Okay, there's my sky, there's my road. I'm going to lock the car body layer. I should have done that, I forgot, but it doesn't matter. I haven't made any changes to it, so it's okay. Right, so there's the road, there's the sky. Let's actually move the car. Now, because we've got these three layers that are going to be working together, I'm going to create a folder on the timeline. It's a new folder, and I'm going to call this the car. And then I'm going to take those three layers car wheel right, car wheel left and car body and drag them into the car folder. Now they tie together and I can lock and unlock them together and I can uh, uh, close the layer, close the folder sorry and click the folder and it'll select all the parts together so this is going to help me move all those parts together. Right, so I've just clicked the layer, I'm going to zoom back in and I'm going to move these parts down onto the road and I'm going to lay the car about there and I'm going to make it start off to the left. Okay, so my car's done, my backdrops, my background is done, I'll lock them both. Okay, so next let's add in the traffic lights so we'll add a new layer this is going to be the traffic lights layer and we're going to draw a set of traffic lights so we're going to keep it very simple with the shapes a rectangle tool and i'm going to fill it with black with no straw color and we will draw a rectangle Okay, and then I'm going to draw another rectangle to be the uh, stand, the pole that the lights are going to stand on. Now to align them perfectly, I'm going to select the first rectangle and control alt 2 and 5, and then that aligns it perfectly to the centre. But I'm going to move it up a bit. 
Now I'm going to take this, make, put it a bit lower than that rectangle, the top one, and again, I'm going to do Control Alt 2 to align it in the centre, and then I'm going to use my arrow keys to move it up until I'm happy with the uh, size of it. Okay, that's looking ha good, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to select it all, just move it, yeah, that looks good, I'm happy with that size. Okay, now for the uh, lights, the, and these are going to be three circles. So I'm going to select the oval tool, I'll draw my green one first. Now, I want it to be about th a third of the height of this rectangle, but I'm not going to draw it over the rectangle because I don't want the circle and the rectangle to merge and to lose the part of the rectangle yet. So there it is drawn. I'm going to move it. Now because I didn't deselect it, it's not going to affect the rectangle. That's a little bit big, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, that looks like it'll fit okay. So I'm going to take this uh, circle and hold down Alt and drag it down to copy it. And I'm going to make this one amber. And I'm going to hold down Alt and drag it down to make a red light. Now, because of the problem of overlapping the our rectangle and losing parts, we've got to be careful with how we do this now. So I've got those three lights they're all aligned together, so I'm just going to make sure again, so I'll select the green, number and red, and then go with Control alt and 2 just to center align them. And then I'm going to think about the rectangle. Is it, are they going to fit inside that space? Yeah, they look okay. But what I'm going to do is distribute them so they're evenly spaced apart. So on the Align tool, and I don't want to align them to the stage now. I want to align them to each other. So I've got those three shapes selected. I'm going to distribute vertical center. Okay. So we use distribute for them. We've distributed them vertically in the center. And now if I move them over onto the traffic light, they look like they fit well. Okay, so I'm not going to deselect them just yet because I don't want them to delete the background. Actually, I'm going to put them a little bit closer together. And then reselect them and distribute them again. Okay, that looks alright. Right. To make them, again, to make them central, centralised to the traffic lights, to the uh, body, sorry, I'm going to click the body and I'm going to control shift 2 and control shift Five. Now it's not working right now because I changed what it's aligning to. So it's just aligning it to itself. So I need to go back into align and align it to the stage. So select the um, body, control shift two, done. Now I'm going to highlight these three. I'm going to line them up here where I want them and then press control shift two. And they're perfectly in line with the center of the pole. Now I can deselect them and those uh, objects are now merged together. If I move the circle, I cut out part of the background. Okay, so I'm happy with these all together. But I'm gonna move my traffic lights over to about here. So over to the right. My traffic lights are done, so let's lock the traffic lights layer. Okay, so now let's go back to the car. We'll unlock the car layer and just look at how it's going to move across. So the way the car is going to work, the animation is, it's going to start here, it's going to move right, approaching the lights, and then it's going to stop you when the lights turn red, and then it'll wait for the lights to turn green, and then when they turn green, it'll pull back off. But now that I'm bringing my car closer to the traffic lights. I feel like the traffic lights are looking too big. So I'm going to go back into them and resize them. 
by just simply using the free transform tool, holding down shift and keeping them in proportion. Okay, lock my layer. Now, how does that look when the car is close to them? Yeah, that looks better. 